If you look at the 2007 yearbook, those are the ones that we should have, like most likely to be a millionaire, most likely to be president. This year, seniors are wanting some new who's who's, and reporter Sam Callahan has all the details. The basketball team had area play games this past week in today's sports. I've got the details. Big new movies are coming into 2017, and in entertainment, reporter Will Vickers has the movies that are coming soon. These stories plus more headlines are coming your way on today's THS TV. Seniors, it's your last day to vote in a classic contest. Good morning, I'm Ashley Ryan. And I'm Brady Talbert, and this is THS TV. The second semester is in full swing, and seniors are beginning to cast their ballots in traditional senior categories. One ballot in particular, the Who's Who, has been making news this week and this past week. Reporter Sam Callahan has everything you need to know on voting for Who's Who. The senior year is winding down and all of the senior traditions are coming to fruition. And one tradition has shown a bit of change. This year, the yearbook staff has added a few new categories, as well as taken some away, and the missing few has stirred up a bit of trouble with the senior class. A few key missing categories include a fan favorite, class clown, best all around, and most successful. I'm not even gonna lie, there's a few of them that I like, and then there's a few of them that I think are a joke. Um, Mainly the ones that we've, like, had, you know, for the past year. Okay, like, check it. If you look at the 2007 yearbook, those are the ones that we should have. Like, most likely to be a millionaire, most likely to be president, best, 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 best dressed, uh, freaking uh, most creative, uh, senioritis, like, you know, like, and th there's not even a class clown. Like, what the heck? There's not a class clown. And there's not, like, most school spirit, but, like, I don't know, like, there's a few of them that need to get booted. Though some students are concerned with the changes, according to the yearbook staff, some categories change every year. In a look at the yearbooks from three consecutive years, while some of the staples remained, two to three new categories did occur with each new edition. And while some don't like the missing categories, there are still a few new who's who's that students are beginning to favor. I like the best friends one. It's okay. I mean, there's a couple old ones that they need to bring back, but overall, it's okay. The Who's Who voting ends today, so those looking to vote need to access their student email and click on the link provided by the school. They must use the roster provided by their science teacher. For THS TV, I'm Sam Callahan. You can watch this story in today's show again on our YouTube channel. We last reported that pre-AP chemistry students were at work doing single replacement labs, which is when an element and a compound are cre combined to create a reaction. And now they're back at it. All three classes are learning double and single replacement. The lab showed the real visuals of the replacement by creating fire and a loud noise similar to a siren or, or bird. The students say that it is a great learning experience. Double replacement lab was a learning experience because we were able to see like what we had been learning in class and take it into like a real experience and so we were able to physically see how it worked. Teachers are hoping that the visual explanation will help students understand writing the equations and the importance of learning them. It's a great opportunity for the kids to just get their hands on some things that are actually in the real world, some real elements, some real compounds that they come into contact with. Maybe they don't know that they're coming into contact with, but now we expose them to the elements, we expose them to these compounds, now they actually get to see what they really do. The big day is just a few months away as students and teachers will move into the brand new high school. And if you drive by the construction site frequently, you may have noticed how the project has progressed over the past year. But what about the people behind the project and the years of prepar preparation leading up to the building's completion? I took a trip to the site of the new high school to give you a closer look and to answer these very questions. It all started with a vision. Dr. Vickers and the school board had a great vision for the project uh, to enhance, um, you know, the, the, the experience for the students and all here in Alabaster. 
For the past three years, architects have collaborated with Alabaster City Schools to design the new high school. And before land was ever cleared, the project had to be mapped out as architects had to take multiple possibilities into consideration. I think our approach was to try to take everything into consideration and try to cover every single uh, basis or possibility from student growth to future programs to current programs. After meeting with teachers, coaches, faculty members, as well as students, it was then time to take the conception of a new high school to the drawing board. Basically is, is we take it like a piece of clay and we mold it into uh, form and space and function. And then it was time to make those plans a reality. The 304 acres of land purchased for the project had a bit of a renovation. This past May, the site of the new high school was just getting prepped for construction. But after three years of planning, walls are up and crews are getting prepared for its opening this July. What will soon be the new high school is currently an active work environment. As construction teams work to have the building wrapped up before students arrive in the fall. We're scheduled to complete uh, this uh, project uh, July 31st of 2017. Um, we're on schedule right now. Since our last visit, foundations have been laid, steel frames have been put up, and brick has been moved into place to create exterior walls. Currently, workers are installing utilities, such as plumbing, electrical, and air conditioning, so workers can begin preparing the interior soon. Just getting it dried in and, and ready to start finishes on the interior uh, as soon as we can get it in, in the dry and climate controlled inside. Currently the interior is primarily white cinder block walls, but when the facility is dried in, you can expect more pops of color. School colors are the first and foremost thing that we look at and consider because basically most schools do want to incorporate their school colors in along with logos and that sort of Thing. So um, colors are important, but we also take into consideration technology. According to the Alabaster Reporter, the school's media center will have technology workstations. In addition, the building will feature several plug-in areas so students have a place to charge their devices. Along with the technology upgrades and size of the new building, Alabaster City Schools hopes the updates will benefit students. Uh, I think this will have a very large impact on our student body because it will be a a nice facility, uh, much larger than the current school, and will provide a lot of resources that have not been available to, uh, to our students. Once again, the new high school is on track to be completed on July 31st. And as always, we will continue to keep you updated on the project. Reporting for THS-TV at the site of the new high school, I'm Brady Talbert. For more information on the new high school and the transition, keep tuning in to THS-TV. Another company is under fire from protesters. Here's what's trending on Twitter. The hashtag boycott Uber is making waves through Twitter as the CEO of Uber has become an advisor to Trump. The hashtag has Uber users showing their disdain with Uber for their support of Trump and how they plan on switching to Lyft. The hashtag has just 1,800 tweets but looks to rise the trending ranks as the day goes on. Want to join in on the conversation? Tweet us at THS News TV using the hashtag Boycott Uber and you could be featured on an upcoming show. Now let's take a look at other hot topics in today's national headlines. After weeks of very close calls, the Dow makes history with its mark of 20,000. The milestone was reached Wednesday and has gone up 1,667 points since President Donald Trump's victory in November. Workers believe the happy days are here again. Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt will lose one of his Olympic gold medals due to a teammate's failed drug test. Bolt and teammate Nesta Carter competed in the 4x100-meter dash together, and Carter tested positive for banned substances. 30-year-old Bolt and his other teammates will have to release their medals from the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Mexican drug kingpin and extreme prison escape artist El Chapo was extradited to the United States last Thursday for a pre-Trump inauguration gift from Mexican authorities. 
Now, uh, senior year is wrapping up quick. I'm already surprised that we're about to graduate like a couple months, but mm -hmm. it's also wrapping up for athletes. Yes, uh, wrestling at senior night two weeks ago, and tonight is basketball senior night. It's also the last mm -hmm. home game. So be excited to see how they can play tonight and if they can come out with a win. Absolutely. Now I have more in today's sports. But first, we've got your needs to know in today's announcement. We'll be right back with more THS TV. Still to come on THS TV. In sports, I've got you covered on the baseball team's game. The chemistry classes are doing a new experiment. I've got more in today's news. This is THS TV, Thompson High School source for sports. The bowling team looks to cap off a successful season with a title at today's state championship. The season started in October and has seen both boys and girls varsity finish undefeated in area play. With over a records of 13-2 and for the boys 10-1 for the girls. Last week both teams traveled to go full and full for the AHSAA South Regional Championship. After day one the boys were seated number two and the girls were seated number one as they started the elimination round. The boys made the semifinals and were knocked out by Stanhope Elmore. Finishing third, the girls continued on their journey but fell just short of first place. The Warriors are competing at the state championship today at Oak Mountain Lanes. It looks like the Warriors have to wait until next year for a run at the duels title. Monday night, they hosted the Oak Mountain Eagles in the semifinal playoff duels. The Warriors took an early lead with the first four matches going in their favor, but at 138, senior and second-ranked Jacob Mikas fell to the third-ranked 138-pounder. That showed the shift in the momentum as the Warriors made it only a few more wins. The Eagles took the lead and held on in three more matches to secure the win 47-25 over the Warriors. And to secure their trip to the first ever 7A state dual championships. Tonight is senior night for Warrior basketball, which means the end of the season is a near. THS TV sports reporter Desmond Burge has the area updated on, on area games with, match, with what matchups to look over the next week. The playoffs are here for our varsity basketball teams. Here's what Drew Thomas and Chris Thompson had to say last night before playing against the state. This year has been a really challenging year for us. Um, starting from the summer, we worked out. We had some hard work as with Coach O, but uh, the guys who wanted to play stuck through it, stuck through it all. And um, it's really starting to pay off now at the end of the season when we're really starting to find our groove. Uh, we had some, some young players that had to play up due to people quitting or whatever and that's been a challenge but um, I think we'll be okay when it's all said and done. It's been a real tough seat. It's been a real tough and uh, you know we've been putting in a lot of work and the workouts <laughs> been uh, you know they trying and tiring but if we still do well in the area then uh, we can come out with a state championship and I believe in my team. Tonight the Warriors will face off against Texas County and the cost again it will be five dollars. The girls will begin at 6 and the guys will begin at 7.30. Come support the Warriors as they take on their third area game. For THS TV, I'm Desmond Bird. Jim to College Surf, we've got the details on today's national sports headlines. Broadcast has begun complaining once again. The Cavaliers stars been 
Get Gun demanding a new player be added to the roster. The Cavaliers have lost three state during a horrible start to 2017, as the 76ers have a better record this year than defending champs. LeBron has called for a playmaker to be added to the roster. Cavaliers paid over 20, 120 million in salary last year and over 20 million in the luxury tax on their payload. And LeBron's call for more spending is causing friction within the organization. A trade was rumored to be proposed by the Knicks to trade Carmelo Anthony to the Cavaliers for Kevin Love. This comes during the week LeBron has been vocally spoken out against the Cavaliers roster. However, the trade was denied by the Cavs and Melo remain a Nick. Russell Westbrook has continued his tirade of triple doubles this season by notching his 23rd. He's also passed Larry Bird as the fifth all-time leader of triple doubles with 60 for his career. Westbrook is on pace to average a triple double for the season. That's all for today's sports. Tune in on Tuesday for an update on the wrestling team on their road to state. Now back to Ashley with more news. The Warrior Excellence Program was designed to recognize students who are going above and beyond in the halls of THS. Teachers nominate, student, nominate and select students based on acts of kind, character and selflessness. Today, we highlight last month's winner. Thompson has multiple programs meant to recognize students who are not only leaders, but also have a positive influence on their peers. This includes the Warrior Strong and Warrior Excellence Awards, but only one student is recognized each month for the Warrior Excellence Award. Trevor Hotelling was nominated for being a respectful student who took initiative to start a canned food drive himself. It was, I called some people up and wanted to help somebody out, feel like it would be a good idea for the school to get involved in something. And I thought, you know, it would be a good idea to get the kids around the school to do something that would make them feel better, helping other people, get an idea of it. He first took his idea to the principal, then contacted Mana Ministries. He also made flyers advertising the drive and delivered the cans himself. Hotelling did not think that his hard work would get as noticed as it did. Well, it feels pretty good because I didn't think it would do like it did. It definitely worked out better than I thought it would, and a lot more people got involved than I thought it would. Warrior Excellence is a great program to highlight students making a difference around the school. What do you think about Warrior Excellence? Tweet us at THS News TV for a chance to be featured on our show. Reporting for THS TV on the Warrior Excellence Award, I'm Ashley Ryan. Communication matters, at least that's the message that juniors were handed yesterday by a representative from the Chamber of Commerce of Business. 11th graders attended a session where they discussed the ways to hold a job interview with soft skills such as good posture, eye contact, and ultimately communication. The speaker also discussed the importance of resume writing and cover letters. The session is just one of the many ways counselors are working to prepare students for college and their careers. So I know in entertainment we're covering the dance team going to state this weekend. Yes, uh, and then they'll go to nationals next week. So I feel like we're always amazing. highlighting uh, different groups both in sports and entertainment yes. that are doing remarkable things in our school. And I, I just, like you, you get to realize like mm -hmm. the people that are, I don't know, you know what I mean. Yes, <laughs> like can't talk. seeing what I'm a music yeah. can't talk. I'll tell you more about the dance team in today's entertainment. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> to come on THS TV in entertainment reporter Will Vickers has you covered in today's Amstar update in today's tech talk I've got the details on Google's upcoming smartwatch this is THS TV Thompson High School source for entertainment Good morning, I'm Madison Graham, and this is your Warrior Weather. Today's temperatures are looking warm with a high of 48 degrees and a low of 31 with clear skies and no chance of rain. 
Next week, you can look forward to warm weathers on Monday as well as a high with a high of 53 and a low of 37 with clear skies. Tuesday is getting warmer with a high of 66 and a low of 43 and not a cloud in the sky. Wednesday will remain clear with a high of 64 and a low of 41. Thursday will have a high of 57 and a low of 43 with expected rain. Finishing off the week on Friday with a high of 62 and a low of 43 and clear skies in the morning with a light rain in the afternoon. That's all for today's Warrior Weather. Be sure to, be sure to stay tuned for the bus stop forecast. The dance team is taking their next steps towards the national title. This weekend as they head to Spain Park High School to compete in the state competition. Teams from Pelham High School and Mountain Brook High School will be there as well. The team is prepared to come into first place at the competition. The theaters will soon be filled with action and adventure and fun for the whole family. Want a sneak peek at what's, what the hot flicks are coming your way? THS TV reporter Will Vickers has you covered on the top three movies coming soon. I'm Will Vickers and this is the top three movies coming soon. Logan is about the older version of Wolverine played by Hugh Jackman and his clone X-23 played by Defon Keen. The villains of the movie are out to find X-23 but Logan comes in to save the day. This movie is in theaters March 3rd and is rated R. Kong Skull Island is about a group of scientists and adventurers who go to the uncharted island while they venture into the domain of Kong. This movie is rated PG-13 and is in theaters on March 10th. Belle, played by Emma Watson, is a beautiful smart girl who is taken prisoner by the Beast, played by Dan Stevens, in his castle. Belle befriends some of the castle's staff and begins to fall in love with the Beast. This movie is rated PG and in theaters March 17th. Reporting for THS-TV, I'm Will Vickers. Two consecutive years, the hashtag Oscars So White campaign might finally come to an end. Oscar nominations were announced on Tuesday, and the buzz is about the six nominations for African American actors. Films like Moonlight, Fences, and Hidden Figures all got nods in the Best Picture category, along with this year's gem, La La Land, which received 14 nominations, a tie with Titanic and All About Eve for the most in Oscar history. Oscar newbies like Casey Affleck and Ryan Gosling will compete with powerhouses like Denzel Washington in the Best Actor category, while fresh face Emma Stone, who has been nominated but has not taken home the statue, will go up against former winners like Natalie Portman and Meryl Streep for Best Actress. For a full list of the categories and nominees, visit Oscar.go.com. Who do you think deserves to bring home the Hollywood's top honor? Tweet us at THSTV News with your prediction and you can be featured on an upcoming show. Movies, music, and more, we've got your head, the latest gossip and celebrity news in today's Hollywood Headlines. It's time to slime. Nickelodeon has announced that professional wrestler John Cena is set to host this year's 2017 Teen Choice Awards. The slimy event will air live on March 11th at 8 p.m. Actor Aaron Paul dropped by the Ellen DeGeneres show and revealed he might already have a shot on his guest spot on Breaking Bad prequel series. Aaron said he was honored to be asked back and will continue to stay in character. Just as Aaron Andrews was finishing one battle, she was hit with another. The sportscaster was diagnosed with cervical cancer earlier last October. Less than a week after surgery, she was in a plane to Wisconsin. A month after the surgery, Andrew was told that there will be no need for radiation and chemotherapy, and now she can take to recovery. That's all for today's entertainment. Tune in on Monday for an inside look at the cast of the upcoming musical, Robin Hood. Now let's toss it to Lizzie with today's Tech Talk.
Google is working on a smartwatch to be introduced alongside its Android Wear in early 2017. Actually, they are making two watches, codenamed Angelfish and Swordfish. Angelfish, the more premium of the two, bears some resemblance to the Moto 360. The smartwatch apparently features a smooth housing that curves where the watch strap meets the body, giving it a smoother look and feel when compared to the angular lugs and multi-piece design of watches like the LG Urban LTE. Angelfish is said to feature a large crown button on the right-hand side of the body with two circular buttons, one above and one below. The purpose of these buttons is unclear at this time, but people assume that users will be able to set up custom shortcuts to popular apps and so on. The smartwatch includes GPS, NFC, and heart rate monitor, and most impressively, LTE connectivity. The ability to connect to the internet without the need for a phone makes the sport potentially the first completely standalone Android Wear watch. That's all for today's Tech Talk. Tune in Monday for more new technology coming your way. Now back to Brady for more news. Last week, first responders from Shelby County and surrounding areas met at City Hall to attend a training session on how to handle situations dealing with people on an autism spectrum. Advisory Group President Dustin Chandler led the meeting and teaching first responders what autism is, how to recognize the signs of it, and how to properly handle a situation dealing with someone on the spectrum. Chandler also mentioned that this meeting was meant to raise awareness in the community about autism, which is one of the largest developmental diseases, disabilities. This session was sponsored by Autism Society of Alabama and organized by the Angel Warriors Nonprofit Foundation. I think that this is just great because now first responders know how to deal with the situation with someone on the spectrum, which they may not have known before. Absolutely, and it's always like very positive to read those kind of stories, you know, that people are, are going out of their way to show that they care and that they want to help others. Yeah, I agree. We've got you covered on the latest news. And Madison will have you covered on the weekend weather. Madison? For those of you having to rise, getting an early start on Monday, the temperatures are expected to be chilly with the temperatures of 37 at 6 o'clock and will stay pretty much the same until 9 o'clock with a with temperature of 39, so be sure to bring a jacket. That's all for today's bus stop forecast. Back to you guys. All right, Noah, tonight is senior night. Where do people need to be and what at what time? Uh, I know the guys' game starts about 7.30, so the girls probably starts around 6. So they'll be in the gym here. So and we'll be to, covering it if yes. they can't go. Yes. And yeah. kind of excited that it's finally our turn to be with on the who's who. And I think it's pretty I think it's not sure quite how I feel on it being yeah, different this year absolutely. than it was last um, year. I, I'm excited to hear the results of that because we like I've always been like a obviously I'm so like sorry guys. Although as a younger uh, kid, like a freshman, and hearing the announcements, I was always excited for that to maybe someday be uh, one of me or my friends. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. Yeah, I always think it's cool to hear about the who's who because it's sometimes it's unexpected who yeah. gets what, or sometimes it's like someone that you always would have known would have gotten it. And this so, year and, and this year should particularly be pretty interesting. And yeah. we and I think they someone said they might do it next week, but I'm not sure. Don't. Uh, Fact check me on that. Okay, that's all for today's news. Tune in on Monday for new things happening around Alabaster. And follow us on Twitter for updates on events happening at THS next week. Have a great day.